right, guys, let's learn about Warrior One, Virabhadrasana A. My name's Jennifer Dixon with Thrive Yoga and Wellness and Thrive Online, and today we're gonna break down a yoga fundamental, Warrior One. So in this case, we're gonna start with our right foot being in the front. What's happening with the back foot is those left toes are facing the front left corner of the mat. So you've got two edges of your mat, right? You want those left toes to face that left corner of the mat. That left hip is pulling itself forward while you draw the belly in, tailbone down. Now what's going on with this right knee? That right knee is bending. You're working towards one day being at a 90 degree angle, but if in order for you to get this 90 degree angle, you have to tilt your tailbone back, that's not great. That's gonna collapse everything into the low back. So only go down so deep that this hip flexor is open enough to keep your tailbone down as you bend into that right knee. Again, you're working that left hip forward, right hip back, and if we had headlights, the headlights would be beaming straight forward. Your shoulders are also working towards squaring themselves off to the front of the room. So in this case, left shoulder forward, right shoulder back. Now if this is really, really tweaky in the low back or in the knees, I welcome you to take a really wide step, maybe even mats with distance apart. That's totally okay. That's giving your hips a little grace. Like these hip flexors, they tend to be tight, especially if we sit all day. So the wider the step or the shorter the step to give that, that hip flexor a break, totally okay. Of course, you're gonna see it online and you know the famous yoga journals and all of that. You can put your heel to heel alignment, work in those hips square, and the knee to that 45 degree angle, but that's only if your hip is ready for it, if this left hip flexor is ready for it. Now let's talk about your hands. Your hands can be here at your heart center. That's just a nice and grounding, a grounding posture, a nice namaskar at your heart. They can be behind your back in either namaskar or just cross behind you, or they can be reaching up where your thumbs are pushing towards that wall behind you. You're gonna feel a nice stretch here along the shoulders, those lap muscles, thumbs really pressing back. In Ashtanga, your hands are together and your gaze is slightly up. Now, if that's really tweaky in the neck, keep the crown of your head tall and just look like you're trying to look in your third eye. So it's just the eyeballs that are looking up. That can be really, really comfortable for me like if my neck is bothering me. So if your hands are touching or not, Think about elbows down and away. So all day we do this anyways. It's not great for the posture and it makes you, makes you nervous, it makes you anxious. Make yourself relax here and you'd be amazed at the physiological and emotional effects of a nice relaxed shoulder. You're all, everything relaxes. So we've got squared shoulders to the front, squared hips to the front, working towards 90 degrees in that right angle and a 45-ish degree angle with the left foot. Let me demonstrate it here on the left. Left foot's forward, left toes are facing straight forward. Those right toes are facing the front right corner of the mat. The right hip is reaching forward. The right knee is straight, but if that's really wonky on the knee, go ahead and bend it. And again, remember, if it's too much in this right hip flexor to have the heel to heel alignment, you can open up your feet, mats width distance apart. What you don't want to do is let the belly go and shoot the booty out. So right hip forward, right shoulder forward, low belly's in, chest is proud, hands can be here at your heart center, behind you crossed, reaching up, pinkies rotating towards each other, or hands touching in a namaskar above your head. You can look at your head, if that, your hands rather, if that's okay with the neck, or if you might have creaky necks, just look up with your eyeballs. You don't even have to see it, but it's the gaze, that drishti that's helping to pull all of your prana, all that life force up towards your fingertips. Thank you so much today for joining me in a quick tutorial about Warrior One, Virabhadrasana A. You'll see this pose in a lot of flow classes. It's really great at building heat, that internal fire, that Agni, which helps to purify us. It's gonna build some strength, gonna help you get into a little bit better shape. And I hope you have enjoyed learning a little bit more about yoga. Can't wait to see you again. My name is Jennifer Dixon with Thrive Yoga and Wellness and Thrive Online. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate. You can drop a comment right below. Can't wait to see you again soon. Bye-bye.